Have you ever wanted to? Why haven't you wanted to go to France? Dad promised to take me. I've never worried about going to France. Why? Because you love the United States, I heard you. You want there's so much to look no, at. I, I, if you're looking for a vacation, uh -huh. uh, there are enough places in the United States. Right. If you're looking for history, yeah. uh, the history's already been made, and going to France isn't going to change anything. Uh huh. And uh, the. I guess it's a cousin twice removed or something like that that is living over there and Scott talked to him and uh, there's no rationale that I know that I should go there. Uh -huh. uh, but your dad never talked too much about it. I guess it wasn't well, real happy times. I don't think my dad had a good childhood, frankly. You know, the, the, the land would not support the number of people in the family. So the, Parts of the family had to go somewhere else. Period. Because you just don't support anybody uh, by the farm. Granddad was my idol, so I always like to hear about him. He was so cute. Did you think he was adorable? Did, what did you? Yeah. He was my idol. Who? Granddad. Oh, he was. Yeah. Well. Bless his little pointed head. His little pointed head. He he was a very hardworking individual that tried to instill in the best of his ability the fact that hard work was a thing that you did. That uh, he uh, he was very difficult to communicate with. It was after I was married for five years that I could finally talk to him. I could sit down and talk to him. I remember there was a session where I had a camera, 35 millimeter camera, and I had the camera sitting on the table, just trying to get him to relax so I could take some pictures. And he was very conscious about that camera. He really didn't want that camera intruding on him. And uh, I finally got him to relax a little and I took some pictures. But it was a very, very difficult process. He was a, a good-hearted individual. He firmly believed that he had to work hard to get his citizenship. And he used to do hospital work for hours on end with the American Legion. He was trying to prove his worth as a U.S. citizen. Yeah, I know he was a great American. He sure gave my dad some, a dose of patriotism. Yeah. He, uh, he was a very patriotic me, individual. No question. Yeah. But he never wanted to teach you French because he was an American. He, I took French class in high school, and I went home and I spouted off this stuff to him, and he says, what are you trying to say? And I said, well, I'm speaking French. He says, you'll only hear that in the courts or in the, uh, not the hierarchy. The, the, the aristocracy. You'll never hear it on the streets. And if you want to hear it on the streets, you better change. And I decided that was enough of that in the uh, that hip branch. I don't need it anymore. <laughs> so I dropped the French class. But I, I think that really he loved to garden, and I always just loved. Hmm? Yeah. I loved it. He, way he would come here and garden and help us. Every bit of this home was he built won. with my well, I think with him. One of the things he wanted to do was to prove his worth. You know, he helped your father, I'm sure, building this house and doing other things. He helped Ann and Ralph build their house. He, he always wanted to keep busy, even after he retired. He just. And, and if, what kind of things did he do around your home? Uh, not with us very much. Were you already take? You didn't have anything to, for him to do. Well, Sorry. there were a lot of things to be done, but I didn't want him having to spend his time doing them. Ah, that was nice of you. Uh, he uh, 
he always thought that he knew lumber and how to build, particularly the framing of houses. And he did that with Ann and Ralph, and I'm sure he did that up here with Bud. Yeah, he helped up here to do that. But he always wanted to sort of keep busy, do things. It was, you know, he worked, God for sakes, I guess, from 1920, 1921 through 1976, was it? No, before that, 1960, I guess it was 60 when he retired. And he worked a long time. Yes, and uh, he wanted to do things. We visited him out at the... They lived in Mobile Home Park. I remember. And, uh, when I was in the, working in LA in the early 70s, I'd go out, take he and mother out to dinner. And that was a big thing. You could just see him trying to say, oh, there are things I must do, or there are things to be done, or whatever it was. These all off my Always. I, I think that carries wire. over. I think no, it carries over to the dad. Yeah, it probably no, carries over the needs to some case. degree. I think you're right. Yeah. Hard workers. Yeah, he was. Uh, but he was great the way he just, you could see he just wouldn't say something sometimes. I mean, he, I, the only person, the first person I ever met who I could see that if you didn't say something that meant more than, than saying something. Do you know what I mean? He knew how not to over talk. Yep. I don't know that trait. Well, he, he had still some difficulty with the English language. And I remember one time, I hadn't seen him for 10 years. And I went back and it took me a good hour talking to him to pick up on his phraseology and his use of words. And the service event was only less than five. Oh. When I first met him, I couldn't understand him. I said the same. I said the same thing to Jerry. I said, I am sorry. Oh, I don't understand what your dad's saying. So when he smiled, I smiled. Yeah. When he frowned, I frowned. <laughs> I could not. I could not. My mother was just to laugh. He said. Spanish. He said, he sounds so good, I can understand him. I kept saying, Mother, I can't understand him. <laughs> and it, I don't know, but all of a sudden I understood him. Yes. I can understand, but I, oh, it was an awful thing. Just I had the oh. he, uh, he used to use some words Didn't. that it used to confound well, he, me and it'd take a while yeah. before I could understand. Yeah, well, I heard him swearing in I French. Oh. You see, yes, I don't I, I have, have any idea what he said. But see, he was swear. here when and when he um, he his finger got fine. chopped off. Oh yeah. Remember that? Yeah. And I was so scared. Oh, I just remember. I was so scared. I thought my grandpa was going to die. Well, here's a, here's a man that worked for at least thirty years oh, in, in labor yeah. field and doing things like that, and he never got hurt one time. And all of a sudden he's up here. <laughs> and he's helping Bud and whack, he loses a fingertip. Yeah, that was awful. I'll never forget it. Yeah. <laughs> Just an interesting individual. I think, I think we packed it nice. I, I think my mother, frankly, felt for a long time that she, she mel married below her dignity. Oh. I, I never understood that because she, I think, wanted to get away from home. So she chose the path of marriage to him to get away from home. Now this is only supposition on my part, but uh, that's what I think happened. And uh, I think she. Well, and my mother. She was, Esther, she was very beautiful. She had that red I hair. In the orchard. Well, and she always uh -huh. thought, she, you know, she was very Grandpa snazzy. And there was no answer. Well. And so I got on the intercom again. I said, Chuck, please come up here. There's a bear in an orchard. And pretty soon Jerry came up the stairs and said, what's the matter with the orchids? <laughs> and I took him by the hand and I led him over to the window. I said, look. He said, there's a bear. 
here in the orchard. Oh, gee. <laughs> Funny. Hey, do you notice I'm wearing Harry Nage today? That's, yeah. The whole thing there is her peace of mind. He is. He was driving me absolutely crazy. Well, I mean, my your mother took for how many years was she working? Yeah. And my father, every and, and time I talk, he talked to me, he'd say, "I am your aunt. What's that mean?" <laughs> and well, my mother used to wear Harry Nage, and then she was always on my dad's case. So my dad bought Harry Nage. <laughs> Wow. You suppose they're doing in there? They I no Are you okay, honey? They are in here. I thought it was because you know, like I was just saying, what I said because Bernie was working Dumb. in the farm all summer and uh -oh. he was living on campus and chasing after his <laughs> girlfriends and whatever he's doing an ROTC and studying and then he's working out on the farm on Saturday. Do you hear that? Boys take a long time to get to know their dads. Yeah. So it, well, it just you was can such break a shame, that. and Bernie, it just tore him up for a long time. Every time, I was just going to go by my, my dad, and, and uh, he used to sit around and visit, you know, with me so far. I died, but that was him. How old was Bernie? Patty was 18. Bernie had to have been 22. Really? And then he it, it, it took a while. Just turned 18. It took a while. To, well, no, you're dead. And you were how old when you really had a good time with your dad? Well. I, I, I worked when I was in high school. There were two or three times when my dad wanted to go to the Veterans Hospital in San Fernando, but he didn't feel up physically enough to drive, so I drove him. He had very little. And we, we got to talking and things like that. So now he'd go off and talk with the man, but he wouldn't sit and talk Who was that? My dad. Yeah. Okay, you around, this is everybody. <laughs> you want, you want to, another funny. Uh, Barbara and I met at junior college. At JV, okay. We decided that this is it. We, we get married, so I, she said, you better ask my dad's permission. So I went down to the railroad station where he was working on that. Uh, Eight to twelve shift or whatever it was, or four to ten shift, whatever it was. And so I walked into the railroad station where he was. He was smart and, out, you know, okay. and he said hi, and I said hello, and I said, I suppose you know what I'm here for. He says, What are you broke? You need money? <laughs> <laughs> How old were you? Uh, uh, Twenty-two. Twenty-two. I think that was right, isn't it? We were married in 49. Okay, you're yeah, really sick when you go. Oh, like that. that's all right. You don't yeah. And I said, no, that's not the reason I'm here. Oh, you got something else in your mind? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what did you say? I said, yeah, I, I, I would like your permission to marry your daughter. Mm -hmm. No kidding. <laughs> 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 old old Whitey was a was a good individual. What was his name? Frosty. We called him Frosty That's Whitey. His name Frosty. Yeah. We uh, had that party one night. Bud was there, and we played the old game. You put the funnel in your pants. You put a penny up here and you lean forward and put the penny into the funnel. No, we, He had had a couple of drinks to catch up with the rest of us who had been drinking since early. And so he put the funnel in his pants and we put the penny up here and he leaned forward the first time and he missed. And we said, no, you can't do that. Put it up here. And about that time, your father took this big glass of ice water and poured it in the funnel. And that's when he was named Frosty. Oh, 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 oh. He's the Robert R. boy since. Uh, he, he, he took it good naturedly. He says, I will get even. And no, Bud I don't always think. was in sort of uh, apprehension of what Frosty was going to do to him. He was going to get something, but he didn't know when or where. Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. I want to see this. Yeah. Okay. Now don't dump it on your head because they're stuck in it. Yeah. Oh. 
I, th I think in some ways, Frosty liked Gabe more than he liked me. But Gabe at that time was a little more mature than I was. Oh, well, he had served with the Army through Europe and a few other things. He also um, wasn't marrying his daughter. Yeah, that's yeah, also wasn't right marrying that. his daughter. On top of that, I can't imagine uh, Gabe ever being... Gabe just wasn't one of these rowdy type no. individuals. He was just always very mature, well, very... With the, with, with that, I can't remember all of the people that were somewhat in that group in junior college, but there were six or eight males. Ooh. My favorite thing. <laughs> My favorite care board thing. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not yeah. that anymore. Okay? I love Yeah, it. that's what I mean. These are all staples, and so you can't play with them, all right? Thank you. Why can't I tear them apart? Because then oh, I can't well. ever use them. Sounds like I'm neglecting my child. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love tearing them apart. You love tearing staples apart, yes. I, I don't think Gabe ever was one of those. No, he wasn't. He, he, in fact, in my way of thinking, was too serious. Oh, fun. Yeah. Uh, I remember when, when we were living on South 16th, he came over for dinner a number of times. And there was no outward humor. There may be subtle humor, but no outward humor. Yeah, he just wasn't one of those. We had Skip as a child. And at six months, Bud and I would stand apart like from here to Barbara, and we'd throw Skip back and forth. I heard about that. We used to, play, <laughs> we used to play chess with Skip because he was burning, and I'd say, don't do that with him. You know, he'd stand there like this, and then flip burning upside down, and then catch him. And I almost had an attack. What are you doing? Well, gee, Chuck and I used to do that with Skip. And I thought, well, it's fine. This is burning. I mean, I don't know Skip. <laughs> Like catch with she, my she didn't think it was funny either. <laughs> no, I hope not. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Skip was a, uh, <laughs> except for the first three months he had colic. But uh, from then on, he had been a tremendous rule individual. Now I got to call it big. I have to, yeah, sir. That's right. So Anthony's six foot tall. Anthony is about six three. Oh, and weighs yeah. about two fifteen, two twenty. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And still growing. Mary had three brothers, all of which were over six foot four. Oh, okay. And so we we expect Anthony to grow. Yeah. It's not a robot art characteristic to be that tall, is it? No. No. Right by that, you know, if you look at old Frenchie. He was short. Yeah, he, he was 5'6", five, 5'7". Five, he wasn't that tall because your brother was only 5'7 and a half. Oh, it's all right. Okay. I know that... Because he went, to, the chief of police at one time, Gabe had to work for the bureau, wanted him to come down because he knew Gabe really well and really liked him. And there was an opening on the police station and wanted Gabe to come down to the So Gabe said, well, okay, I'll come down there. Well, they measured him. <laughs> and he had to be 5'8", and he wasn't. Oh. No, thank heavens, I'm glad he worked never was 5'8", because it worked out a whole lot better for him working what he did than being a policeman. <laughs> and so, so he was, he didn't, wasn't 5'8". My father we, we were buried in 49. We were in here 51, 52. You were married, what, 54? 50? 53. 53. We had left there. Yes, we had left. No, you were married in 50, yeah, 53. Just barely, my brother made it legally. Well, that's all right. We had the same thing. She, she was over there counting the months, and she says, as long as we can get to 13 or 12, we're okay. <laughs> and that's how it works. It's just like that. It was electric, and electric quit, so I got tired of tripping over the cords. I took dikes and cut off. Well...
<laughs> He's going to set the uh, these ears up in the air.
Okay, little boys, all turn around. There, now I got all of you. I got all four of you little boys. This is Alex's birthday. Yeah, they were red and that. My birthday, you see? He gave them in the 28th and he was due. And then what happened was I went into labor at 8 o'clock. I went to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy withdrawal. No, he's mad because he stole what he was done. Oh. <laughs> You guys, she said you could come in here and start eating. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You eat now. Joshua and Matthew. Joshua and Matthew, come in here, please. Okay, I guess we have to line up. There, you want me to back up a ways? Oh my God, Daddy! Come on, you're taking all. It's only a block away. Yeah. No, there's no. Oh, Carson! Where's that from? From here, Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Where's that from? Oh, thank you. 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 Alex, 
Now do you want to open my the present that I gave you? Oh, I'm going to open up this is the favorite. This is a baby saver. I'll get this one for you when you're done. Okay, baby. This okay. one. <laughs> oh, and this is from, obviously this is from Ryan. Yeah, the card is on the floor. Is this something to eat? Spider-Man candy! Wow, isn't that neat? Oh, Alex. <laughs> Who would have thought of such a thing? Isn't that cute? No, that's right. not. Grandma. That's from Grandma. That one and that one. That one's from Joshua too? No. You can, that no. Oh, that's from Grandma. That's from okay. Grandma Betty. Oh, this is cute. I the, oh, look at Alex. Look, this is a red sweatshirt. Oh, yeah. Oh, Alex, after you. Oh, I I'm fishing for Too. It's okay, Alex. Alex, Right 
there. different from year to year, you know, man, how they acted last year to this year. It's so funny. They're people now. Oh, yeah. And boy, she lets them know it. <laughs> She's very aggressive. Oh, That's good. She has to be. Yeah. Okay. okay. So now we've got the other two
to be vulnerable and to share that gift with the world. Patty has some of her drawings in our church office, and she created our Easter banner last year. And we are excited, even though Alex has been a part of our family for a long time, we're excited to baptize him on this day. And we also welcome um, Lisa, Lisa and Sharon. You all know Sharon Dubow. Lisa is her daughter, and she'll be getting a new life with Nick in a couple of weeks. And we are glad that she has decided at this time in her life to commit her life to Jesus Christ and to this congregation. And we also celebrate today Slater. Slater has a big brother named Davis. And they are the beautiful children of Aunt Amy and David. Amy and David met with our session a couple of months ago to become members. And today they are standing before you not only as parents and making the pledge of parenthood and baptism, but they're also joining our congregation. And this is a good day today. Um, let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for in your image you have created us and you have made us. We thank you for the gift of water that cleans and renews us. Bless this gift of water today that it may be a cleansing, renewing presence. And may all of us remember our vows of baptism on this day. Amen. Here's the water that reminds us we are all one family. Alex. Oh my. Alex, on behalf of this congregation and the church and all the world, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Lord, grant Alex courage and peace and great joy in his life, that each day he may turn to you as his best friend, knowing that you will help him and encourage him and love him as he is. Amen. Alex, you have been sealed with the cross of Christ and marked as Christ's mm -hmm. own forever. Thanks to God. <coughs> And now, Lisa, I'm not going to pick you up. <laughs> Lisa, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Lord God, grant Lisa wisdom and courage and great joy as she walks with you. May she find in you a refuge and a strength and a joy throughout all your days. Amen. Lisa, you have been marked as Christ's own and sealed as his child forever and ever. Thanks be to God. Now Slater. I don't know if Alex or Slater is heavier. <laughs> Slater, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. God, may you all your days guide Slater in his life. May he find in you a source of light and hope in this world, that wherever he goes, you will follow and help him. Amen. Slater, you have been sealed as Christ's own child in your baptism and marked as his own forever and forever. Amen. We remember today that Slater and Alex and Lisa do not make their baptism by themselves, but that they are supported by you, the congregation. And so now, David, I ask that you ask the congregation these questions. Can you please stand? <laughs> Do we, the congregation, promise to nurture and support Alex, Lisa, Slater, Amy, David, and Davis to encourage their growth in Christ and to celebrate all whom they are and all whom they will be? If so, say, we do. We do. Please join in the prayer that's in your bulletin together. Lord of living water, 
long before we utter the words, Alex? Sasha. No, right now, what are you doing? Cleaning up my room. How come? Because we're going to make my room different. Well, what are you going to do? Make it different. Paint it. Mommy. Mom. Mommy. And are Mommy. we ready to clean? We're there. Are we ready to paint? Okay. Um, mommy, mommy. <laughs> Let's paint. Mommy. Mommy. Yeah? Um, are you going to take off the wallpaper today? Yes, we are. We're taking off the wallpaper. <laughs> recording this for you, Alex, so that when you're a man, you'll remember what your room looked like. There's that closet. supposed to jump on your bed? You said I could jump off on my bed. Can you move it? No. <laughs> Did I? I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> I don't want you to do that. You're a gooserberry. Okay, let's get started. We've got to move your bed out to the living room. the couch this is the mess because the baby's room is taken apart this is it matches the border print that goes around in there there's other rooms I can show you more but this is all that you need to see and I'm sorry about the mess what are you doing Alex Bye. 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 that's nice Good job, huh? Yeah. I'm sure I'm doing a good job. I'm sure I'm doing a good job. 
swaddling clothes. Remember I told you swaddling clothes were what they wrap the baby in, like blankets, pieces of cloth? And laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same countries shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were so afraid. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David the Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from then unto heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. And they came with great haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made it known abroad the saying which was told to them concerning this child. Nikki, who told the shepherds that Jesus was born? Nikki Angel. Nikki. Who told you? Nikki. Miss Becky, I need to step out. I'll take care of Sarah. Who guests that we have today helping us to practice. Um, tonight what's going to happen is the teachers, just for the teacher's sake, so that you know, um, Kathy's class is coming in and then
Oh, well. Almost got it. in the freezer outside. Well, now what you going to do, kid? <laughs> Can't get it down. I guess you need some help. Yes. There it came. It fell, it fell down. Oh, yes. You've never seen this before, have you? No. <laughs> You're not supposed to follow me around. Meow. Well, how's that? Is that better? Come on. Come on. Meow. Meow. Yeah, Rusty. Really kitty. There goes Peanut. There goes Peanut. Where'd you go? Where's Peanut? Where'd you go? Peanut, kitty, kitty, kitty.
Peanut. There you are. Come here, Peanut. Come here. Peanut. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Come on. We'll go hiding around the corner. There are my kitties. There are my kitties who are gone because they're scaredy cats. Come on, Peanut. Come on. <whistles> Rusty, kitty, kitty. Come on, kitty. Come on, kitty. Rusty. They don't like this something new. Nice try, Ronnie. Huh? Nice try. Look at that serious look on his face. Of course. Two first basemen. <laughs> a backup. <laughs> Are you supposed, supposed to be first base? No. Well, they need a third baseman over there. Maybe you're supposed to. Maybe you're supposed to. Oh. <laughs> 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 Come on, Ronnie. 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 Come <laughs> Here comes the third person. Oh, we need a catcher now. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. See, he figures out how to get his mitt down, Carol. <laughs> No, Patty, don't 
Well, you know what to do. Get them all chopped down, get a cap. Plus, you guys are watching what's Joyce is really happy because somebody looked at the house. Ready, Coach? Yeah, we're ready. Oh, really? Great. Go, go. 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 Go, he can't figure out where his mid is, how he's supposed to know where he's at, it's Carol. Oh, I'm trying to get it. Oh, it's a good job. Oh, it's a good job. You don't have to, and the first baseman to touch them anywhere, Patty, before they get there, they're out. Oh, yeah, I should have sent that 100 miles. <laughs> What's he trying to do? Get dirty, Patty? He's <laughs> probably <Drop his pants. laughs> He's picking up dirt and running. Ah, that's like that. Okay, heads up. <laughs> Eyes on the ball. Whoops. They had that on camera. Good stop, Alex. That was good, Alex. Well, when you run, you go to that place that you're getting on. Oops. Yes, he did. He caught the ball. Yes, he did. He managed to. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> throw a bat again? Try not to throw the bat, okay? okay. Uh -oh. I don't know. Well, that's me. What's he doing? He's going sitting out there going. Punch 
Baxter up. <laughs> well, I would. I'm not going to be here next game, probably, so I can't. Why do you use soda? Turn, 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 turn. He's not turning right. He's not. Get your pictures now before while well, they're still standing still and the dresses aren't torn. And everything, the shirts are tucked in and everything's cool. All right. I'd like to welcome you to uh, our kindergarten graduation, 1997-98. Just kind of nervous here. Appreciate my crown by closing the blinds so that you all won't be blinded out there. And, uh, you can have a better view. Well, we've learned a lot in kindergarten this year. 
one of the kindergartners just this evening was awakened to the, the hard reality when she told her mom, Mr. Allen's a, the boss of everything here. I had this plain door to everybody works for somebody. I have a school board that, uh, that I work for, and we all work for the Lord. And uh, that, that's kind of frightening, though, because I was showing a, a parent through the building this afternoon. They were saying, now, who's your boss? This is kind of an odd question for a, a, a new family. And I didn't know if I wanted to give any addresses or not. Um, also, one of the, the kindergartners uh, who will be in first grade next year, is didn't go to our kindergarten this year, it's transferring in at first grade. Um, along with our kindergartners, they learned about April Fool's Day. One of the very important things you have to learn in kindergarten is about April Fool's Day and what that means. And so the kindergartner went to school and the teacher played a few tricks on them and they went through all of the, the normal stuff. You know, you got a spider on your head and um, the real subtle uh, April Fool tricks that kindergartners do, and she really had it down pat, so she was going to see her uh, her grandma, she said, Mom, I'm going to do an April Fool on, on Grandma, and got to Grandma's house, and Auntie was there too, and everything was perfect, and so she, she came in the door, and, and she said, uh, Auntie, you, you have a spider on your foot, and then of course, the Auntie cooperated, and jumped, oh, 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 and she looked at her, and she says, ha, ha, St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> So, a lot of things we learn in kindergarten, but we haven't quite got it all yet, so we're going on to first grade. All right, we're glad you're here. Let's open in prayer. Father, thank you for... Thank you for coming to our graduation program. Each day at school, we have, the, we say, the Pledge of Allegiance. We'd like to start our program tonight in the same way. Would you please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance?
get on the bus, Jan. Jan will ride the bus. <laughs> the game. Win team win. That's it. Joe. Joe. Were written and sung by Mary Rice Hopkins. And these two songs are some of the children's very favorites. And we're going to say a Bible verse for it first. Genesis 1 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1 1. In the beginning, God made the seas.
Matthew 22, 37. You shall love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Matthew 22, 37. There were twelve disciples. Jesus called the elephant, Simon, Peter, Andrew, James, the brother, John, Philip, Thomas, Matthew, James, the son of Baptist, that is one to do this, and for all of you. He has called us to, he has called us to, we are his disciples, and I am one of you. He has called us to, he has called us to, we are his We can see in Alex the character quality of helpfulness. He will jump right in to help anyone who needs it. Alex likes to have fun. <laughs>